Hello everybody, welcome to Preparedness 101. This is going to be a series of videos on basic preparedness and this is part one, making a plan. So if you've been thinking about becoming a prepper and are feeling completely overwhelmed from watching all the prepping videos on YouTube, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to get started. Be sure to stick around because I'm going to give you my best tip on getting started that will not cost you one penny to do. The main thing I want you to understand is that prepping starts out the same way as you started out in life. You had to learn to sit up before you could start crawling. And then you started walking. And then you learned to run. None of these YouTube preppers and homesteaders got to where they are today in one day, one week, one month, or even one year. They all started out just like you are today by developing a preparedness plan. I was watching Appalachia's Homestead with Patera the other day. I'll put a link to her channel in the description box below. And she was talking about that when she first started, her son was in diapers and now he's getting ready to graduate high school. So we're talking at least 16 years to get to where she is today. Your preparedness plan is no different than any other things that you're thinking about doing. For example, if you're thinking about going to the beach for a week, you start planning out when you're going, where you're going to stay, and how long you're going to stay. How are you going to get there? What activities are you going to do? And how are you going to pay for it? When you start your preparedness plan, you need to decide on what your main concerns are. What are you going to do? to be ready should something happen. You should have this conversation with your spouse and include their concerns in the plan. Additionally, your plan should have realistic goals that you can achieve. Achieving these goals will give you and your family a sense of accomplishment and a reason to take your plan up to the next level. This would be going from the sitting up phase to the crawling phase and on to the walking stage. I recommend that your plan cover five key areas of preparedness and that you initially be able to cover at least two weeks for all five areas before you move on to the next phase. The five key areas you need to cover are number one, food and water. You need to have enough food and water readily available to feed everyone in your household for at least two weeks along with one gallon of water per person per day for two weeks. You also need to have a way to prepare that food without relying on public utilities being available. Number two is shelter. You need a place where you can stay for two weeks that will keep you warm and dry. You probably already have this covered as your home is your shelter unless you lose it due to a nat natural or man-made disaster. You need to be able to maintain your home at a comfortable temperature without relying on public utilities. How are you going to use the bathroom? Will your toilets still work without public utilities? How are you going to deal with trash? Basic hygiene? Can you provide basic lighting? Do you have a fire extinguisher along with a battery powered smoke detector and carbon monoxide alarm? Number three is medical. Do you have a well stocked first aid kit and know how to treat injuries with it? Do you have a supply of over the counter medications? to treat basic illnesses such as the flu, as well as any prescription drugs that you take on a daily basis to last if you cannot get to the pharmacy. Number four is communications. Do you have a battery powered radio and a supply of batteries for it? What about a battery powered weather radio? Can you charge your cell phone if needed without utilities? How are you going to get information that relates to you in your area? Number five is security. How are you going to defend you and your loved ones if the need arises? Do you own a firearm along with the proper ammunition and do you know how to use it safely and effectively? Do you have good locks and deadbolts? Do you need to install some solar powered motion lights? Can you form a neighborhood watch with people so that you can help each other out in a time of disaster? If you have developed your plan and reached the two week goal, then you have went from sitting up to the crawling stage and on to taking those first baby steps. You are now better off than the vast majority of your friends and neighbors. Now for that tip that I promised. 
Once you've written out your plan, take a complete inventory of everything that you own before you buy anything. Odds are you already have many of the items that we have discussed and don't even realize it. Camping gear covers a lot of this and most people already own at least one firearm. Chances are you have a battery radio stuck back in the corner of a closet somewhere and you probably already have some flashlights or lanterns. Don't rush out and buy anything until you see if you already have them. Put them in one specific area so that you know where they are if you need them during an emergency. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. If you think it would help someone that is thinking about starting or just getting started, share it with them. Leave me your suggestions in the comments below so that we can all learn together. Please subscribe and we will discuss the five items in much more detail in the next videos, starting with food and water. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video and remember, prepare today for what might happen tomorrow.